welcome back to the David67 Celtic and News YouTube channel. Um, happy David67 um, with a happiness carrying on from the great result on uh, Wednesday against Feyenoord and primarily from the fact that this was a good fighting performance, battling performance from Celtic with a lot of our uh, Good players uh, such as McGregor, O'Reilly, um, Hart, all stepping up um, and doing their absolute hardest and damnedest to win the game for Celtic. And also the fact that we came back having had a very disappointing uh, equaliser with about 10 minutes to go and we came back in added time to win the game. Uh, which uh, took me back to the good old days of Celtic um, under O'Neill and Strachan, and for that matter, under Billy McNeil and Jock Steen, um, where Celtic were always a big, big threat in the last 10 minutes of a game or in injury time. And similarly, last year and the year before under Postacoglu, again, Celtic's brilliant efforts and energy and endurance to go from whistle to whistle and be playing with this equal amount of energy and aggression and attack in the last minute as it was the first minute, which is something that's disappeared under Rodgers this year. However, we seem to recapture the good old days of Ange Postacoglu and the good old days when I was a boy of Celtic scoring vital goals late in the game or in injury time. Today's video is um, going to be uh, an update on a few little news stories and also an in-depth uh, review again of Matthias Keysgarden. At the start of the week I put a wee poll on the uh, site asking for your suggestions as to who you felt would be best to come to Celtic in the winter transfer window as the third striker option with the potential obviously to leapfrog Oh, and even Kyogo in the pecking order, uh, if they did especially well. Now, the poll will remain open. However, at the end of the week, the results are Matthias Kiesgarden, the Bromby under-21 striker, at 36%. Interestingly, Lauren Shankland, 28-year-old Hearts captain, current Scotland full international, he was in second place at 29%. Um, Boyan Bioski, uh, North Macedonian uh, Aberdeen, he's 24. Uh, it's been a big success at Aberdeen last season. And this, he was in the 21% and with Sydney Van Hoydonk at 7%. And there was also one uh, 7% for someone else with suggestions such as Vangelis Pavlidis, who is a very good uh Goal scorer for AZ Alkmaar uh, in the Dutch league, also uh, um, Greek in full international, so quite reminiscent of uh, Jakimakis from a couple of years ago. Also um, Simon Banza at Bra uh, Braga and Lucas Boye at Grenada and Andreas Skov Olsen at Bruges. Um, Avlidis, um, Boye, Banza, Skov Olsen are all very, very good players. Probably given the stage in their career, the team they're playing for, probably all likely to be looking to uh, move to one of the big leagues or big clubs rather than uh, moving sideways or for a couple, couple of them moving backwards in terms of prestige of league. Um, however, uh, um, they all are very good strikers, but probably not players that are willing to come to Celtic, which I think is uh, something that we always have to bear in mind as Celtic fans that nowadays that the Scottish League isn't a prestige league, and so... Uh, so we have to manage our expectations um, and remember the type of player and uh, nationality of players who are likely to see moving to 
Celtic as being a step up from their career. Um, and so the good old days of signing um, big players from uh, England, such as Sutton and Hartson and Alan Thompson, etc., back in the 2000s that carried on um, for a good five, ten years through the striking years. Um, I think those days are gone, sadly. Um, and um, so uh, I think in terms of the players we're going to be able to get in in the upcoming transfer window, I think we need to bear in mind that certainly we can try and start sign quality players. Um, some of the players may also be have a degree of um, potential um, to be increased at Celtic, uh, as is proven um, very successful with players such as uh, Jota and um, Van Dijk and Van Wanyama and Christopher Iyer and Odson Edward and uh, Musa Dembele, etc. etc. Where we signed good quality players who got better and better and better and better under various different Celtic uh, managers and coaches. On that topic, uh, it does seem like Celtic are very much stepping up their interest in Thiago Arojo, the 22-year-old left-back who plays for Estoril in the, uh, Pol uh, in the Portuguese <laughs> division. Um, uh, there's a, a, a video uh, from a couple of weeks ago that has a partial scouting reel, higher reel of Arojo, uh, my thoughts on Arojo as a signing and the massively overwhelming consensus of opinion of fans and subscribers who've made comments uh, with that video is that we don't think Arojo is near enough a good defender to uh, be an upgrade on Greg Taylor. Super duper attacking player Arojo but a lot of doubts regarding his ability to defend. To defend. Uh, I've been online uh, an interesting uh, quote from a Daily Mail journalist who uh, seems to have an inside track at Celtic. Arojo seems to be very high up on Brendan Rodgers' um, um, wish list, um, but um, given the fact he's 22, has no experience playing in European club competitions, had a couple of under-21 caps from Portugal a few years ago. He's been playing for a relegation battling team uh, for the last couple of seasons, either on loan and now transferred from Benfica to Estero. Uh, um, so two seasons basically battling relegation in um, the uh, Port Portuguese league, come partly through his next season in Portugal. Um, interestingly, that article was talking about him playing primarily at left back. However, my own research has him playing left wing back and left sided midfield, and very rarely uh, in the left side of a back back four, which is Celtic's current tactics, is a uh, left back, right back with two centre backs in the middle. We uh, don't really ever play a 5-3-2, we don't play a 3-5-2, uh, nor do we play four uh, side by side in the midfield. Um, um, and so uh, for me, Arojo doesn't really fit in with Celtic. He isn't experienced, he's not top quality. Um, he isn't really a fit for Celtic's current tactics. Isn't a recognised good defender, and some of the stats that were quoted within a couple of the articles about him show that his stats in terms of tackling and interceptions and all the sort of defensive type things are poorer than Greg Taylor's, who is the player that we're supposed to be upgrading. Um, interestingly, uh, in a press conference also, Ange Postecoglou was heaping praise on Anthony Ralston, Greg Taylor, and Alison Johnston as examples to his Spurs, Spurs players of how to play fullback in the Ange Postacoglu model. And certainly uh, those three were uh, 
often playing as inverted fullbacks under Postacoglu, um, which is something we seem to have gone back on this year with more conventional left back and right back uh, positions. And certainly for me, the best that Greg Taylor's looked at looked like this year is when he has been playing as a more inverted fullback, getting forward into midfield and into the final third with defensive midfielders and centre-backs covering back for him if the ball does go up, up the other end and before he can get back. Anyway, um, as is coming back to the main topic of the uh, video, Mateus Keys Garden was um, the top of the poll for the David67 channel subscribers. And so I have done a little update um, scouting highlights reel, which will follow. And that is from Ultras FC TV, who are another YouTube channel. And in the past, they've uh, allowed copy, uh, excerpts of their scouting videos, uh, as is usual under YouTube rules, um, without violating any kind of copyright rules. So, um, have a wee look at the uh, up-to-date uh, Keith Garden scouting, which is um, um, highlights of his performance uh, in the 23-24 season for Bromby in Denmark, and also it looks like some under-21 footage also from this season. So, um, hopefully you enjoyed that little excerpt of a couple of minutes of the uh, um, Scouting Reel Highlights Reel that's on YouTube. Um, the full video is about six to seven minutes. Um, and it has a few more examples of Keith Garden scoring goals, setting up goals, tackling back, etc. Um, but I think the two minutes there gives a good flavour of all his skills. For me, he's a player with an awful lot of pace. Um, he's only five foot eight, but seems very, very good on the ball. Fights off challenges, very strong, very direct as well. Driving at defences, also seems very able to come back, pick up the ball in half way line, hold the ball up for teammates to uh, come onto or spin in behind. Um, which also seems to pick up the team uh, quite a lot of fouls from that 
a little video as well. Um, is two-footed, uh, good strong shot with his right foot, um, good instincts for following in shots and crosses, gets himself into the six-yard box on a regular basis to score goals, good in the air as well for a player of five foot eight, um, a couple of very good headers also in that scouting reel and also uh, especially this season apparently he's been much better at uh, setting up goals for teammates and he appears this season also to have uh, developed a uh, much better judgment in when to try and score himself and when others are in better positions and so it does seem rather a good all-round forward um, has uh, four under-21 uh, international goals for Denmark, having also played uh, under-19 and under-17 for Denmark. Um, also, um, career record for Bromby of 81 appearances, 21 goals. Has uh, played some European club competitions as well in Europa League and Champions League qualifiers for Bromby. Uh, and so has played at a higher level, both under-21, but also in European competitions as well. Output of 21 goals and 81 matches, probably just a wee bit lower than one would expect. One would be hoping for maybe one in two, one in two and a half, something along those lines. Um, but uh, if he's also uh, setting up goals for our, for opponents, uh, for, for teammates, um, and also creating space for other teammates to exploit and go through and score. Um, I think we need to look at that, that statistic also in other ways. I think Celtic would be uh, um, very advised to sign Keith Garden in the next transfer window. I think he's a player who will fit into Scottish culture, fit into the club extremely quickly and extremely well. I think he's a player who on day one would be able to start for Celtic uh, in replacement for Kyogo and O if they're away on Asian Cup duty. I think he'll score a lot of goals in Scottish football. I think he's got the potential to score also in Europe. Um, and I think he's a player at 21 who's going to get better and better and better and better um, and give Celtic quite a number of good years and then a wee bit similar to Dembele and Edward maybe moving off for um, uh, double or triple the fee to uh, English League etc. Um, in the summer transfer window Celtic were said to have been close to signing him for uh, a fee that ranged between four and six million. It would appear that the transfer fee is now eight to nine million. Uh, there is quite a bit of interest from English Premier League sides and Bundesliga sides, but uh, it appears it's more the ones who are going to be battling off relegation from uh, Bundesliga or English Premier League rather than any of the really top top teams in either of those two countries. And so uh, I think there's a very high chance the attraction of coming to Scotland, um, regular first team football, regular cups and medals and leagues etc and regular European football will all be good obviously he also would fit in with uh, Matt O'Reilly a fellow under 21 Danish international uh, and they've played together on several occasions again that would help him fit into the club uh, and so I think his garden is very much a viable option uh, the other option that came second in, in our poll was Lauren Shankland, a 28-year-old Hearts captain, has scored uh, tons of goals for Hearts in the last couple of seasons, and scored internationally as well, such as the game against Georgia, where he scored the equaliser late on, and I think Shankland also would be a good option for Celtic design. And I do wonder, especially if there's speculation about Kyogo uh, going off to Brentford in the winter transfer window, I do wonder whether signing Keith Garden and uh, Shanklin might well be a good option. Um, there were stories coming out of Hearts uh, and that Rangers have been inquiring regarding Shankland, but the 
Hart's asking fee is too much for Rangers' budget, whatever that means. Shankland has a contract with Hart until uh, May June of 2025, um, um, which means Hart's are likely to be looking to sell him if there's interest. More more likely in the summer window uh, next July, July 2024, rather than January 2024. Uh, Hearts, I uh, suspect, are uh, eyeing up a place in Europe next year, so they may be quite reluctant to lose their captain and main goal scorer. But uh, it could well be that uh, <coughs> extra half a million, a million pounds on top of uh, a couple of million pounds uh, might well entice Hearts to let their captain and main goal scorer go. And I, for one, think Shankland would do well in Scotland and playing uh, for Celtic in the Scottish League. He's scored obviously lots of goals for for Hearts. Uh, Celtic is liable to have more chances, and thus, if he keeps up the same form, uh, should score lots of goals for Celtic, much the way that Scott McDonald and uh, Lee Griffiths did, moving from other Scottish clubs to Celtic. Um, and so. Signing Keith Garden and Shankland in the winter window, uh, I think would be uh, a good bit of business for Celtic. So just about finishes things off for today's video. Um, later on today, I'll be doing a short video uh, um, just predicting my uh, starting 11 for tomorrow against Hearts. And I'll do a Hearts Celtic preview video early Saturday morning, uh, which gives everybody a few hours to watch the uh, video before the Celtic came at three o'clock. Um, and as always, do feel free uh, either with this evening's short video or tomorrow's longer video to pop any comments, uh, etc. into the comment section for those videos. And I was, uh, as always, happy to discuss, debate, uh, share opinions, etc. Um, do feel free to pass on details of the channel to friends, family, colleagues, other Celtic and football fans. Uh, if you haven't already and have enjoyed today's video, do like and subscribe. So for today, uh, and chat again tomorrow. Goodbye and hail, hail.